Scoliosis is a medical condition in which a person's spine is curved from side to side and on an x-ray can resemble an S-shape rather than a straight line. Scoliosis is hereditary and more common in girls than boys, but in most cases isn't painful. Dr. Afshin Aminian, an internationally renowned pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Chalk Children's Hospital in Orange County, California, explains this condition. There's different types of scoliosis, okay? The most common type is the adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. Adolescent, obviously age, you know, 10, 11, 12 for girls and a little bit later, 12, 13, 14 for boys because they mature a little later. But uh, we do see a subset of kids with early onset scoliosis. So they present between the ages of zero to three and that's called infantile idiopathic scoliosis. And then we have a bunch of kids between ages three and 10 and that's called uh, juvenile idiopathic scoliosis. Let's talk about the early onset scoliosis. So that's the younger kids. Uh, and usually it's really hard to diagnose because kids at that age are not sitting. The parents are the ones that usually pick, the, pick it up first, bring it to the pediatrician's attention, and then we get involved after x-rays are done. Um, a small subset of these children is because of how they were crammed up inside the mom, mom's belly, right? So they're positional, and a lot of these get better. There is a subset that have congenital deformities, so they're born with malformation of the vertebral bodies. And again, you know, the rules don't apply, but we have certain radiographic parameters, parameters that we could kind of look at to judge whether this is going to get worse or not. Uh, the idiopathic that don't have any abnormalities in the vertebral bodies and just for you know, unknown reason, the spine starts twisting. What we do is the classic treatment of trying some sort of a bracing program. Obviously, if your spine is curved and you're leaning to one side, we put you in these body jackets and braces to push you the other way. Not the most comfortable thing. We try everything we can because there's no good surgical options for the kids. The most common type, luckily, the adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, we have good surgical options because they're older and they're mature, so we have the spine fixed. And that's not a problem. But when you're faced with a three-year-old with a major curvature, you can't do surgery on at that young age because that kid's going to grow. And if you do any sort of a surgery that doesn't allow growth, then the torso is going to be short, the lungs don't grow because the lungs are attached to the spine, so they're going to have breathing difficulties as they get older. So they present a lot of unique surgical challenges, so we try non-operative treatment as much as possible with some sort of a bracing option. If we have daytime bracing, nighttime bracing, some that do progress, then we actually cast them, put the kids in a body cast that covers the whole torso. And um, luckily, they're at an age that they adapt easily to it. The alternative options is just, well, watch the, your child get worse and get more deformed. So uh, we have a lot of support with the families and support groups out there on the internet. They are so worried about their little baby, you know, at an age that they're going to be wanting to see them run, jump, play, do all this fun stuff, and now they're going to be in a buddy cast. Uh, but a lot of these families have found support through these uh, support groups and uh, and the kids are, uh, are enjoying some of their activities in the cast. If I have a child that has uh, got really severe scoliosis, and we have a whole bunch of them, you know, age three, four, five, uh, to me success is if I could get that child without an operation to about age 10, 11, because I know at that age I could fix their problem with a reliable surgery, one surgery, good forever, and this, they've lost not too much trunk height, their lungs are mature, so there's not going to be an issue with lung development after age 10. So that's a success to me, avoiding surgery to get them up to, up to age 10, 11. Um, now, said that, you know, we're faced with a lot of kids that we do the bracing and they fail. We do the casting and they fail and they keep continuing to progress. When we approach uh, surgery for those uh, really young ones, uh, we have to be really due diligent about what surgical options uh, are the best. And I don't think there's one out there that's going to be really the holy grail. Oh, we're going to do this procedure and it'll be perfect. Um, there's going to be some growing rods that, you know, we put in the children that they, as they grow, we have to have multiple procedures to grow the rods with them. There's some now new magnet rods that hopefully we don't have to do multiple surgeries, but there's some external adjustment that the rods grow uh, as the child grows. These are very early experimental um, surgical techniques. 
Here at Chalk, we're working on developing implants that we could correct the spinal deformity and still allow the child to grow with those implants in them.